NYX just released their tactical boot, but is it just a NYX boot with the facelift or is it actually made to be lighter, more agile, more water resistant and meet uniform requirements? We're gonna find out by cutting it in half because this might be the highest quality tactical boot on the market. And they're using an old material in a new way that I think you guys will find super interesting and thanks to NYX for sponsoring this video. We're running our Bad Child Father's Day sale where you can save 20% off belts and wallets. For those of you, who are terrible children and didn't buy your dad anything for Father's Day, you can at least buy him something. Even though it won't be delivered for a week, you can at least tell him you bought him something from us. And to get that 20% off, just use the code with least favorite child. And in full disclosure, Nick sent me and my brother a pair of their Waterworks boots that are built the same way for testing and feedback. So just to let you know, full disclosure, we could help just a tiny bit with this boot. So what did they do to this boot to make it more tactical? Well, the first thing is their 365 stitch down construction. Well, almost all heritage style boots are built with either the 360 Goodyear welt where the upper is tucked underneath the insole and then a welt is sewn to it and then sewn to the midsole or outsole or a 270 degree Goodyear welt where it's the same thing as the 360 but the heel is nailed to the insole with nails. Or it's a Blake stitch construction where the upper is still tucked underneath the insole but there's a stitch line on the inside of the boot that sews the upper to the insole. So with Nick's new 365 stitch down, instead of that upper being tucked underneath, it's flared out, then stitched down through the midsole. So there's no stitching going on to the inside of the boot and no stitching to the insole. And this isn't a super revolutionary idea because there's a lot of people that do a 360 stitch down, but I haven't seen anybody do it on this high quality of a boot. And so that's kind of what makes it unique. So why would they use a 360 stitch down on a tactical boot? What makes it more tactical ready? Well, it's a lot more watertight because those three other types of construction, all that stitching goes to the inside into the insole where water can leach in and get into the inside of your boot. But with a 360 stitch down, there's no outside stitching going to the inside of the boot, obviously, except for the upper stitching, but no sole stitching goes to the inside. It's all external. And another benefit is it's easier to resole because that stitching doesn't go all the way through the sole. It just goes to the midsole. All the cobbler has to do is peel this old outsole off slap a new one on and it's it's pretty easy it's pretty straightforward you can even do it at home with the right basic tools we have a few videos on how to do it and we barely know what we're doing but what are the cons with the 360 stitch down if you wear out this leather that's flared out it's a lot harder to resole because it's not a separate strip. So like on a Goodyear welted boot, if you wear out that welt, you can just sew a new one on. Whereas with this, it's the same piece as the vamp. So what is the old material that NYX is using in a new way? Well, it's rubber, lots and lots of rubber. And they've replaced two important components that are usually leather with rubber. The first one is the midsole and the second one is the insole. And that might sound a little bit odd because you know we're used to nyx boots being completely leather but there's some interesting benefits and characteristics of rubber that make this a more tactical ready build with all with this much rubber and the rubber that they're using is the exact same rubber that they've used on their boots for years and years you know on their outsoles it's, it's not glued to a piece of leather. It's usually glued to a rubber slip sole be because rubber binds better to rubber. And so they're using the exact same rubber that they've been using for 50 years on the slip sole of their boots, but thicker and in different parts of their boots. But why would you replace the leather with rubber? Well, when me and my brother got the sample pairs to test and prototype, the first thing that we noticed right off the bat was how much more flexible the boot is. Literally the first few steps you take, you're used to, if you've ever had a pair of heritage boots, it's like walking around in casts for the first like three days. But with these boots, it articulates and flexes a lot easier with that rubber in there. The next benefit of rubber is how it reacts with water. Because the problem with leather is it absorbs water pretty easily. And one of the big problems with leather absorbing so much water and shrinking and compressing and pulling all those oils and, and tanning compounds out is eventually it cracks. You know, not nearly as fast as fiberboard and foam does. It's still a significantly better material than those materials, but it does crack. Like this is an insole from a pair of NYX boots that they sent me. So since the rubber doesn't absorb nearly as much water and it and rubber just is naturally more flexible and has a lot more flexes in it before it starts cracking, it makes a better insole material for more wet environments. And that's a reason why they've also launched the same style of construction in a couple of their other boots with their Waterworks boot. This is the one that I was testing for them because you know, there's a lot of people that have jobs where they've got to be in water all day, every day. Maybe not fully drenched in water, but their boots are going to get wet every single day. 
and rubber's a lot better material for that. And they also released their hiker boot with the same construction. So it's definitely a build that NYX is doubling down on based on the evidence that they've seen from all the years and years of boots being torn apart, rebuilt in their factory, and seeing how much leather can crack and how crack resistant these rubber slip soles are. So why aren't all boots made out of rubber like this? Well, there are some negatives to it because rubber doesn't compress nearly as much as leather and that's one of the big benefits of the leather insoles is you get that perfect footprint that contours to your feet, making your boots more comfortable. So knowing those issues with rubber, Nix decided to make these boots accept a leather insole. And most of the time with these types of boot, if you slide an insole in there, it squishes your foot up to the top. But the way that they make these boots, they allow a little bit of relief on the inside to fit this perfectly. And it allows you to take this leather insole out, buy whatever insole you want. If you want a little bit more squish, slide it in the boot and you have the comfort of a nice insole inside of a handmade boot, which is really nice. But what else is tactical about this boot? Well, they've done a few other unique things. So. In the heel here, you can see they put a wedge of PU foam, which is gonna give you a lot more squish than you're used to for most of Nick's boots with the rubber outsoles. It'll, it'll feel a lot more like the wedge sole boots at the heel, which is nice. And it will also make them just a little bit lighter, not by a whole lot. They're still a pretty heavy boot, but it does lighten them up a little bit. And they've also changed this heel counter patch to give it a little bit more of an angular look. 100% uh, aesthetic, but it's a tactical boot. You gotta have some hard edges on there. And then they've also given you a little bit of a padded collar. And if you've ever owned a pair of boots like this, that's like an eight inch or a 10 inch boot, that collar that's not usually foam gives you a high pressure point to the degree that I have to not lace up the, the last two eyelets half the time when I'm breaking in boots because every time you pivot, that point right around your or right around your calf just digs in as you're breaking the boots in. But with this padded collar, being a tactical boot, you can really cinch this down and that gives you just enough relief that you can keep that collar tight around your ankle. So that's everything we can figure out from the outside. Let's cut this thing in half because I haven't even seen how this is built on the inside and I'm really curious. So let's get it chopped in half. All right, I've got it cut in half and I didn't feel any steel in there, which is another good sign for a more water resistant boot. But let's open them up and see what's inside. So there is some leather in this boot. You can see they use the exact same leather heel counter. They still use the leather shank and obviously the the insole insert is still leather. So all the components that are important to conforming to your foot that need those, those unique characteristics of leather, they've kept them leather and then everything else they've, repla re they've replaced with rubber. And it's a pretty bold move because NYX is known for their leather boots, they're known for their old school construction and, this, and sneaker, that sneaker world's way better at trying out new materials and new concepts, but the boot world's a little bit more stagnant. So I really respect the fact that they're taking risks, they're trying new stuff, they're taking proven materials and using them in a new way. Because you can see now more fully how thick that rubber is on the insole. You've got that rubber midsole and then that PU foam. It's a, actually a fairly simple boot. So was it worth the price by replacing the rubber with the leather? Well, they still build these boots in the exact same way, all done by hand, stretched by hand, lasted by hand, everything's still the same. They just use a different material. And we did the video with Red Wing where we kind of questioned their choice of choosing uh, fiberboard and foam over leather and they sacrifice that durability for the comfort of those two materials. Well, I think with NYX, what they've done is they haven't replaced a material with an inferior material. They've replaced a material that is on par with leather 
that has unique characteristics that are good for certain situations that leather isn't. So, and, and I talked to Nix in a very honest way and was like, is the rubber, is it way cheaper than leather? Like, be honest with me, like, what are we doing here? Is this? And they told me that the rubber is such a high quality rubber that it ends up being about the same price of the leather per, per foot. So to me, I think they're worth it. If you're wanting those unique characteristics that you get from rubber, the flexibility, the agility, the, the water resistance, they seem to be a really good boot, especially if I want it for like a tactical boot or more water resistant jobs where I actually just want to use their waterworks boot. You know, I, I think they've knocked it out of the park, to be honest. I think they went out on a limb and did something new and I think they killed it. And obviously this video is sponsored and it's always, and I've done collabs with Nick, so you might be like, oh, it's a, this is a sales pitch. He sold out to Nick. But I just, I don't see anything in here that points to this being a bad boot. And just like all these videos where I, I take a pretty strong stance on these being a really high quality boot and potentially, and in my opinion, the best quality tactical boots in the world, prove me wrong. You know, if, you, if I got something wrong, I'm open to being wrong. Prove me wrong in the comment section. Let me know what specifically you thought I got wrong or think I got wrong, or maybe there's something I missed about this boot, but I think they killed it. And word on the street is they're coming out with a coyote leather version of this. So be on the lookout for that. And thanks for watching and thanks to Nix for sponsoring this video. Uh, these sponsored videos are the lifeblood of the channel. It's what allows us to, to spend this ridiculous money on boots and shoes that nobody would ever cut in half. So thanks to Nix, thanks to you guys, and thanks for always watching the videos. It means a lot to me. See ya.